Today, I'm reacting to a video of a chiropractor adjusting a quadriplegic. Yes, that's correct. A chiropractor adjusting a patient who has paralysis of four limbs. What'd you say? Ladies and gentlemen, could I please have your attention? This video is sponsored by Human 2.0, your trusted source for online training in body weight exercise, kettlebells, animal flow, primal movement, and injury prevention. If you're interested in any of those things, be sure to check them out here on YouTube. Hey interns, I'm Dr. Chris Rayner and I am not your everyday ortho. I teach you about injuries, orthopedic surgery, and medical topics in an easy to understand and entertaining way. Today for orthopedic rounds, I'm going to review a video from a YouTube chiropractor where he performs chiropractic manipulations on a wheelchair bound patient. I will share my thoughts on the treatment from an orthopedic perspective and what I think is going on. Now of course, this is just my opinion, but my opinion is based on 7 years of training in musculoskeletal disorders and an additional 12 years of clinical practice. For the record, it was two chiropractors that sent this video to me for review. Okay. So clearly, I'm gonna review a chiropractic video. I expect that some of you will not like that. So here are my ground rules so that you can't say that I am part of the Illuminati. Number one, I'm not gonna say that these patients should take drugs instead of seeing a chiropractor. Number two, I'm not gonna say that these patients should have surgery instead of seeing a chiropractor. Number three, I do not think that surgery or drugs are the solution for all leg or back pain problems. And I will not suggest that these patients undergo surgery or take drugs to fix their problem. Number four, I'm gonna speak about the techniques that I observe and the related medical science. Number five, I don't think that chiropractors are taking patients from orthopedic surgeons because I don't think that we treat the same problems. Now, with the ground rules out of the way, let's get to the topic at hand. This is gonna be a bit of a longer video, so you can use the time points to skip ahead for specific comments. And by the way, show praise. If you received benefit from the treatment that you received, then more power to you. Do whatever you need to to obtain relief in your everyday life. But since I don't understand what this chiropractor was doing, consider this an open letter to Joseph Cipriano. Please explain to me what in the name of science you are doing. So this patient is reported as a quadriplegic. Basically, this is a person who has partial or complete paralysis of all four limbs. Usually, quadriplegia involves loss of motor and sensory function below the level of the injury. This can be full or partial. In the case of quadriplegia, the injury or lesion occurs quite high up, generally in the neck. In this case, the patient presents with a tenodesis grip at the wrist. So, this tells us that the injury is at approximately the C5 to C6 level. This is good because it means that his diaphragm control is preserved so that he can breathe independently, unlike Christopher Reeves. Watching the patient, we can see that this is an incomplete spinal cord injury, given that he has partial control of his trunk. But he has a Foley catheter and a urine collection bag, so we know that his autonomic control is lost. Shell Prey states that he was previously able-bodied, and there are pictures on his IG that confirm this to be the case. Following his injury, he underwent some kind of surgical procedure, which typically in the context of a spinal cord injury would be a decompression and a stabilization procedure with surgical implants or rods and screws. So this is the backdrop for this video. So here we see that Show Praise is able to independently transfer himself from his wheelchair to the table. So this tells us that he has at least grade four function of his triceps. The triceps is innervated by the C7 and C8 nerve roots, so we know that at least some of the function of the triceps is preserved. While transferring himself from the wheelchair to the table, we see that he's also able to partially extend his legs at the level of the knee. And so we know that he has partially intact quadricep function as well, at least grade four, which is not full, but it's enough to counter the forces of gravity. While moving around on the treatment table, we can see that he also can partially lift his head and neck off of the table. So we know that he has some anterior neck or neck function in the front and plus or minus some anterior chest wall function as well. So at this point in the video, we know that Show Praise has suffered a cervical injury at approximately the C5 or C6 level. And we know that Following his injury, he underwent some kind of surgical procedure, which, as I mentioned before, was most likely decompression and an instrumented fusion of his neck. So to be clear, this is somebody who has had a C-spine injury and who has had instrumentation of his neck. And now the chiropractor is going to do a manipulation, a cervical manipulation, no less, 
of his neck. This is bonkers. This is absolutely fucking insane. This leads me to believe one of two things is the case here. Either this dude has balls that are bigger than those of King Kong, or this person doesn't really have a cervical injury. And I don't think it's the latter. Joseph Cipriano, if you can explain what you're doing here to me and how it's safe and whether there is literature to back up what it is that you're doing, go ahead and educate me. So again, at this point, as if the first absolutely bonkers neck manipulation on a quadriplegic patient wasn't enough, we have another one. Another crazy neck manipulation in a patient who has had a cervical fracture and subsequent instrumented fusion of his neck. It's clear here that Joseph Cipriano does not have any regard for the instrumentation that is present. So at this point in the video, the chiropractor performs a thoracic manipulation. And my question here is like, like why? You, you do realize that this patient is a quadriplegic, correct? Um, and as such, there generally is not that much movement that is going on below. And I get it that the patient is complaining of some discomfort in their back from constantly being in the seated position. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure that there's much going on in the thorax that is going to require a manipulation. So at this point, um, we can see that uh, while he's laying down, Chopraise is able to uh, lift his arm forward elevation. So this tells us that supraspinatus, anterior deltoid are working and intact. So again, this confirms that he has some C5, C6 nerve root function. So here at this point, um, we go back to an adjustment. And the patient has already stated that he has no distal sensation, meaning no sensation below the level of the injury. So my question here is why the thoracic adjustment? How will this adjustment improve the forward hunch? Did he do any radiographs or is he working off any radiographs that the patient brought with him that he assessed beforehand? Maybe he did these things and he just didn't include them on the video, but it kind of doesn't look that way. Or are these just generic adjustments that you use on everyone, including quadriplegics? Okay, so now we're moving down to the pelvis. So he has minimal, minimal lower extremity function. Not to mention that um, the legs, the lower extremities are not weight bearing because he's quadriplegic and he sits in a chair. So this means that they will be subject to disuse osteopenia because there's not really that much force on them. And so the body has no need to deposit calcium in the bones there. As such, these bones are generally quite brittle. And in fact, it's not uncommon for quadriplegics to suffer fractures in their lower extremities simply from transferring themselves from their wheelchair to the bed or some other surface. So why, why, for the love of God, is a full grown man pushing on both wings of the pelvis, what are you hoping to adjust? To be honest, this is a good way to introduce a pelvic fracture to a paraplegic patient. This is definitely not recommended. And I may not be a chiropractor, but I am a bone doctor an orthopedic surgeon. And I have seen this type of injury before, simply from patients transferring themselves. So yeah, not a good idea. So now um, Dr. Cipriano moves on to adjusting the shoulders. He puts the patient on the table and he does this little maneuver here. Um, what I wanna know is what is this accomplishing? Here the chiropractor is posteriorly loading the glenohumeral joint axially. In an incomplete quadriplegic, who has decreased upper extremity function, this maneuver will cause unnecessary loading of the posterior labrum and capsule of the glenohumeral joint. If he pressed with enough force, this could cause a posterior subluxation or dislocation of the shoulder. This is an injury that I fix arthroscopically, surgically, all the time. The adjustment that the chiropractor is performing here mimics a load and shift test, which we do intraoperatively to test for instability of the shoulder. We basically try to get the shoulder to come out of joint so that we can demonstrate the instability. 
And this is the way that we do that. So I'm not sure why he'd be using this as an adjustment technique. He, he continues on to adjust the, the upper extremities, the small joints, the fingers, and he does a bunch of snapping. Basically, he's just cracking the knuckles. And to be honest, this is of less utility than dedicated stretching. Given the lack of muscle tone in some of the muscle groups of the upper extremities, show praise is likely to have contractures in some of the muscles of the upper extremities. And to be quite frank, those muscle contractures will laugh at these little joint manipulations that are being performed. Given that they have occurred over time, it will take sustained stretching and range of motion work to overcome the effects of these contractures. At best, these will provide only transient relief of any of the symptoms that Show Praise is complaining of. So here, the chiropractor states that he's gonna do some sternal work. Wait, what sternal work is he doing? What is he adjusting here? The sternum is a fixed joint. It is not designed for AP or sagittal translation. It is not. Adjusting the sternum in this manner simply increases the laxity or looseness at the sternocostal articulations at the front of the rib cage. That's it. And generally speaking, that's not a good thing. And here the chiropractor is performing some chest compressions as some form of adjustment of the rib cage. <sighs> My thoughts here are the same as with the pelvis. This is a quadriplegic who generally has disuse osteopenia, whose bones happen to be more brittle than most other people's. Rib fractures can easily occur with this type of pressure. So again, not really advised. Okay, so now he's talking about the clavicle. The clavicle is a fixed bone between the sternum and the acromion, or the shoulder blade. The role of the clavicle is to act as a stabilizing strut, um, to hold your shoulder at a particular distance away from the midline of your body. So why would you want to manipulate this stabilizing structure in the sagittal plane and unduly stress both the sternoclavicular and the acromioclavicular joints? I'm not sure how that's gonna be beneficial for this patient, or for anybody for that matter. We, we don't want instability of either the sternoclavicular or the acromioclavicular joints. Now, as if the stuff that has gone on before was not crazy enough, now we are going to apply the Y strap to the C-spine of a C-spine injured patient. The, like we're being punked here, correct? Because like you couldn't be that cavalier. Show prey says, whoa. Yeah, no doubt. What is the indication for this technique in a C-spine injured patient? We can argue all day about whether or not this is a valid technique to use in someone who has an intact cervical spine. But for somebody who has a previously injured cervical spine and who has an instrumented fusion of the cervical spine, what is the role for this procedure? Let's say risk level uh, 100. So here he's doing adjustment of the upper thoracic spine. And all I'd say here is that um, again, because of the disuse osteopenia, we can expect that these bones to be soft and brittle. There is, you know, an increased risk of vertebral fracture. Sometimes these patients get fractures simply from sitting and or moving. You don't really need to put a lot of force on the spine here in order for a fracture to occur. So I've done some reading about the drop table and I understand that it's supposed to be um, gentler than doing a manipulation on a regular table. Um, and there are a number of other benefits, but to be honest, I wanna know how is this technique specific in any way? What levels of the thoracolumbar lumbar spine do you believe yourself to be treating by doing this? Again, we're talking about a quadriplegic patient who has no sensation in his lower extremities or torso. So after doing some more manipulation, out comes the freaking Y strap again. And again, I'm asking, what's the point, dude? This patient has had a decompression instrumented fusion of the cervical spine. And you can't adjust fused vertebrae because they've been fused. They generally don't move with respect to one another. We fuse them so that they will be stable and therefore they can't really be adjusted. More importantly, do you have literature to support this technique and its use in patients who have had instrumented fusion of the cervical spine and or a incomplete spinal cord injury? So this whole video and its title 
are based around the idea that this quadriplegic who has no sensation below the level of his injury feels sensation after his manipulation and massage by this chiropractor. So how are you feeling? I feel awesome, man. I feel awesome. You notice the difference? Yeah, man. My neck is feeling like relieved. It's like... Joseph, have you figured out something that thousands of researchers couldn't? And if so, what is the secret? The patient later comments that he is feeling the increased blood flow. My legs are tingling right now. Like, I, I can't feel them, but I can feel them. It's, it's a weird concept. It's like Possibly, I guess. I, I have a hard time believing that 20 minutes of treatment with manipulations and a massage gun are going to restore feeling in a patient who has been a quadriplegic for six years. I'm not buying it. Because if it were that easy, every quadriplegic would be doing it. But fortunately, Joseph Cipriano explains by saying that he is taking the pressure off the nerves. Yeah, dude, you're killing me. Taking the pressure off of which nerves? What pressure? That being said, that's a wrap. If you feel that I unjustly treated chiropractors in this video, then let me know in the comments. If you like the video and you want to see another one, then let me know that too down below. Thanks for watching. I will see you for rounds next week. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.